exclusive of upper bounds. So when I'm counting how many observations are in this class, I'm including the 20s, but I'm not going to include 35, but I'm including everything up to 35. And similarly in the last class here, I'm going to include the 95s in here, but exclude 110s or anything up to 110. Anything, anything but just below 110 is included. The important thing to note is that the important thing to note here okay, is that every observation is contained within one of our classes. The smallest value is 20, so 20 will be counted in this class. The largest value is 106, 106 will be counted in this class here. So then my frequencies go down the, the second column. My frequencies are how many values fall within each one of our classes. Now to calculate the frequencies, all we do is we walk through the data set, okay? We walk through our data set, counting how many values are less than, are greater than or equal to 20 and less than 25. So how many values are less than 25? Well, there's one, there's two, there's three. 25 ain't less than 25, so there's still only three. There's three values so far, okay? So there's three, three, there's four, okay? There's five. So there's five values less than 25, so we're going to have a frequency. There was five observations in this particular interval, so we put a five in here. Now, of the values that remain that haven't been crossed off, okay, how many values are less than 50, okay? Well, none of these here are, okay? How many values are less than 50? There's none there, okay? There's one here, there's two, okay? There's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, okay? Oh, there's seven here. There's eight, there's nine, there's 10. There's, there's 10 values that are less than 50. So there's 10 values in here. How many values that remain are less than 65? Well, there's one value, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, there's seven, there's eight, there's nine, there's 10, there's 11, there's 12, there's 14, there's 14, there's 15. This looks like there's 15 values less than 65. So we have a frequency of 15 here. Okay? How many of the remaining values are less than 80? Well, there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six, there's seven, there's eight, there's nine, there's not that one, no, 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 not that, okay? There's nine, there's 10, there's 11, there's 12, there's 13, there's 14, okay? And there's, there's 15 values there that are, less than, that are less than 80. So there's 15 values here that are less than 80. How many values are less than 95 of the remaining values? Hmm. Well, there's one here, okay? And this value here that I, that I thought I counted is two, okay? There's three. And there's four values less than 95, so there's four values in this particular, this particular class here, or this interval. And finally, of the remaining values, how many are less than 110, okay? And you can probably see that we've only got one value that remains that's less than, that's less than 110. So we've got one value in here. So we get a total, okay, which should be, well, our sample size is 50, so we should have counted up 50 frequencies. So we have five plus 10 is 15, Plus the 15 is 40, plus this 15 is 45, plus 4 is 49, plus 1 gives us a total of a total of 50. Okay? So actually what we have here now is we've constructed our frequency distribution. Now, you might ask, what else can we do with this? What other types of frequency distributions can we construct? Well, we can construct the relative frequency distributions, okay? or small f. I'll make this a little bit bigger. Or small f is another way of looking at our frequencies, but our frequencies relative to our total. 
They're fractional amounts. If we were to take to our 50 observations, if we were to consider uh, this, this particular, all these responses, yeah, okay, and if we were to consider a, a pie with 50 slices, the number of observations in this interval represent 5 fiftieths. So actually, this relative frequency is 5 fiftieths here. The frequency in here represents 10 fiftieths. Frequency in this class here represents 15 fiftieths. Then we have another 15 fiftieths. Then we have another four fiftieths, and then we have the final one fiftieth of the observations are within this interval here. Now we could convert these to decimals, okay? So five divided by fifty, okay? You can actually see that that value here is zero point one. So this is actually equal to zero point one zero, okay? Ten divided by fifty, okay? You can see here that that's going to give us zero point two. So this represents zero point two zero, okay? Fifteen divided by fifty. 15 divided by 50, which is going to be 0 0.30, okay? So that gives us 0 0.30. And then we have 15 divided by 50 is also 0 0.30. 4 divided by 50, 4 divided by 50 gives us a value of 0 0.08, okay? And finally, we have 1 divided by 50 gives us 0 .0, 0, 0 0.08, that should have been 0, 0 0.08. 0 0.08 should be in there. And 1 divided by 50 is going to be 0 0.02. Okay? Now, depending on rounding, these might all add to, these should add up to 1. But sometimes we have to round up and round down, in which case we might be a little bit over or a little bit less. But what we've effectively got is the relative frequencies. Now, once we have the relative frequencies, we can then construct our percentage frequencies. So our percentage, small f, are simply a relative frequency scaled up from a scale of 0 to 100. So we take this we take this particular axis here, or this particular column, and we simply multiply by 100. So we have 0 0.10 by 100 gives us 10. This gives us 20, 30, 38, okay? Uh, this gives us, and this gives us 2. So actually 10% of our observations were between 20 and 35. 20% were between 25 and 50, 30% between 50 and 65, and so on and so forth. Okay? What about if we want to construct a cumulative, a cumulative distribution? Okay, so let me just expand this out. So our cumulative distribution, okay, capital F, okay, is simply an accumulation of the frequencies as we go down through the classes. Okay? Now, what we're going to construct is we're going to construct a, a less than cumulative distribution okay so this is going to be our less than our less than cumulatives cumulatives okay so the question here is here is this is that with respect to all of the upper bounds how many observations are less than the upper bounds so how many observations are less than 45 well there's five okay 